Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we will take a look into how to save an entity into the database table. Well, this is one of the common requirement in real time project to save an entity into the database table, right? Well, in this lecture, we will see how to use save method from crude repository interface to save an entity into the database table. Alright, so save method as name suggests, this allows us to save an entity into the database table. Alright, so basically we can use save method to perform both the operations save and update. If we are trying to store new entity, then save method will internally call entity manager, you know, persist method to save a new, you know, entity into the database table. If we try to update an existing entity into the database, then save method will internally call merge method to merge the updated information into the database table. Alright, so in this lecture, we will see how to use save method to perform a save operation. That is, we are going to save an entity into the database table. In next lecture, we will see how to use save method to perform update operation. Alright, let's go and let's head over to the intelligent idea and let's see how to use save method to save an entity into the database table. Well, basically, you have two options. Either you can write the JNA test to execute a piece of code or you can simply you know implement command line runner interface or application runner interface to run a piece of code for example so this is the main entry point class of our spring boot application you can simply implement a command line runner interface it provides a run method right just go ahead and implement it and you can write the code here okay and if you run this uh, spring boot main entry point class then this code will be executed well, this is the first approach we can use to execute the P subcode as a standalone. Second approach we can use a JNA test to test a P subcode. Okay, so basically we are going to write the JNA test to execute a P subcode. All right, so just let me undo this. Okay, and now go to the product repository interface, select it, and right click, generate, and then select test and by default IntelliJ IDEA will provide a class name as product repository test so let's keep as it is and go ahead and click on ok now you can able to see a repository package will be created under test folder and within a repository package you can see product repository test class has created now let's go ahead and let's annotate this class with add spring boot test annotation well basically spring boot provides add spring boot test annotation to load a full application context of your spring boot application well here we want to load a full application context because we want to inject some of the spring beans in this class okay so go ahead and choose spring boot test annotation to load all the spring beans from our spring boot application now let's go and let's see how to use a product repository and its methods in this class well in order to use a product repository we have to auto wire it right so let's go and let's use add auto wire annotation to inject product repository interface so here we are basically doing a field based dependency injection so let me simply create a product repository instance here now we have injected or auto wired product repository interface now we are good to call its methods right and product repository interface internally extends jp repository interface and jp repository interface internally extends paging and sorting repository interface and paging and sorting repository internally extends crude repository interface and we are going to basically look into this save method to save an entity into the database table right well notice here we are not going to write a real JUnit test cases to test a repository layer components here here we are basically writing a JNA test case to you know execute a piece of code right so basically we use add data jp test annotation to test the repository layer components but here we are basically using add spring boot test annotation to load a full application context so that we can able to inject any spring bean in this class and we can simply use it all right so don't worry about how to test the repository layer components i will create one dedicated section of the lectures to show you how we can test repository layer components using add 
data jpa annotation and also will follow bdd style naming convention to write the jnu test cases okay and here we are basically write the jnu test case to execute the psub code all right so i am going to create one jnu test case here i will call it as save method something like this and let's annotate this method with add test annotation okay so this is the jnu test case and within this jnu test case we are going to write the logic so basically we need to first create a product object okay and then we'll save that product object into the database table and then we'll display the product information product information okay so let's go and let post create the product object product and then product new product and let's go and let's use setter methods to set the values to the product object let's go and let's give a product name something like product one so just give dummy data and let's go and let's give description as product one description all right and let's go and let's give a product stock keeping unit something like let's say 100 abc something like that all right and let's go and let's give a price to the product so this should be a big decimal so i am going to call big decimal instance and just pass 100 and product dot set active let's say true and next product dot set image url so let's give any image url here let's say product one dot png something like that and product dot set what else remaining okay so we don't have to set the last updated and you know date created fields because we are using hibernate provided timestamp annotations to automatically you know fill the values for these fields now let's go and let's save this product object into the database well this is a save method right and let's go and let's save this product object into the database let's call product repository and call its method that is save method and look at here save method expect entity you know as a method argument and go ahead and call this save method and just pass product as an entity perfect and look at here save method returns the saved entity in this case the type is product so let's go ahead and let's take the result of this save method in a product object let's say saved object something like that okay now once we save a product object into the database then we simply display this product information okay i am going to simply call the sysout over here saved object and just call get id well you might be wondering how the primary key will be generated and it will be assigned to this product object while saving into the database right well basically save method internally you know uses hibernate to create the primary key and it will assign to product entity and then it will save into the database right and here save method basically return the saved product object right and that we are basically storing in the different object and here we are basically checking whether this saved object has a primary key or not well in order to print a complete product object we can use two string method right so go to the product class and here we can simply use add to string annotation from lombok library so lombok library will basically provide a two string method at a runtime for this class so go ahead and call to string annotation over here and then let's go back to our test class and here we can simply put another sys out okay and just call to string method of saved object okay now let's go and let's run this jna test case and let's see how this works and how hibernate will create sql queries 
behind the scene so let me execute this JNU test case now well well one more important point here is we are using sequence as a primary key generation strategy right and hibernate will trigger a few more SQL statements to get the sequence from the table and update the sequence into the table. Now let's go and let's see the output of this JNU test case. And here you can see Hibernate generated a couple of SQL statements to get the sequence from the sequence table and update the sequence in the sequence table. So these are the couple of uh, Hibernate generated SQL statements to track the sequence into the sequence table. Next, you can see Hibernate generated SQL statement that is insert SQL statement to insert a record into the database table, right? And these are the two sysout, uh, you know, prints. For example, we have provided a sysout to print the primary key and the product information, right? Here you can see. All right, so these sysout prints a primary key as well as product information. All right, it means that Hibernate behind the scene created an insert SQL query to save a product record into the database and as we are using sequence as a primary key generation strategy so Hibernate will trigger a couple of SQL statements to get the sequence from the sequence table and update the sequence into the sequence table. Now let's head over to the MySQL workbench and let's see how this record is you know saved into the table. Well let's go ahead and let's refresh the schemas and let's go ahead and let's select the rows from the products table and you can able to see a product record is successfully saved into the database table and let's also see the sequence and you can see two okay so sequence is also updated successfully in the sequence table it means that we have successfully used save method to insert a product record into the database table in next lecture, we'll see how to use save method to update an existing entity. Alright, I will see you in next lecture.